you. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. Svenja Danovitz, and me and my co-founder, we left our postdoctoral studies at Stanford to tackle the world's biggest problems, hunger, malnutrition, and sustainability. And all of this by transforming the way the world produces dairy. Now, why is this a big problem? Because traditional dairy farming is broken. We are 8 billion people on Earth, and already to feed all of us, 10 animals per year have to give their lives to really sustain us. One ton of CO2, kilogram, <laughs> one ton of CO2 emissions are related just to food for every single person. Now, dairy in general, is a really big industry. It's a $900 billion industry. But there are some alternatives out there. So why don't we see a bigger change already? It's because they are still a niche. Because consumers love animal dairy. And that is why we have decided to build a future that does just that. Because I love dairy, and I cannot imagine a future where we do not have access to milk. You could say, well, I haven't had a glass of milk in ages. No, maybe not. But dairy is not just your liquid milk. It's your pizza, it's your cheese, it's your yogurt, it's your cakes, it's your biscuits, it's your sauces. And that's why it is so popular, not only because of its taste, but also because of the nutritional qualities of milk. In the US, 2.5 million children die every year because they don't get the access to good nutrition that they should have. Even my own daughter, she's intolerant to milk. So we are struggling to meet her nutritional needs. And that is something that is going to become even worse in a future where we do not have milk. So the future that we want to build is really a better future, a future where everybody has access to good nutrition and milk, of course, is a big part of that. So this is how we're going to do it. We have developed a novel type of process to produce a full animal milk. You can actually see one of the, well, the first picture in history of a cell-cultivated milk that has the potential to really become bio-identical to cow's milk. Now, this is not just a vision anymore. This is the reality. We are living in the future where we can produce real animal milk outside of the animal in a bioreactor. And this is, um, you can come see, we've got the first samples of uh, cell-cultivated milk powder with us today. If you're interested, come meet us later, and we can show you exactly how it's done. So the milk that we are doing is, in the end, it's not a new brand of milk that you find in your supermarket. It really is a new technology to produce any kind of milk out there. We have produced goat's milk, we've done cow's milk, we've even done American bison milk, just to show that we can. And the good thing about this process is, it's a continuous production process, so you kind of get the, the cleanest form of raw milk possible. And with this, we really can solve the world's biggest challenges. We can feed the growing world population, we can get access to good nutrition to everybody who needs it, and we can tackle climate change and slash the food-related emissions uh, related to dairy with this technology. So, why are we the ones to do it? Well, because we have shown that we can deliver. We started in 2022 and we have scaled the technology, we have reduced the price and we have already secured the support of some consumers as well as the industry, which are the ones that are really going to bring this innovation to market with us. So, if you love milk, and if you want to build a future that is healthy, that provides good nutrition to uh, the people on Earth and that can feed the growing world population, please come talk to us. We are raising seed and uh, we'd be happy to um, get you involved in supporting our vision. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Svenja. Then there, there's the Q&A. Ah, Don't leave yet. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for a great pitch, Svenja. 
Um, I'll definitely come by and taste the milk. Looking forward to that. Um, you are uh, likely going to put a lot of people out of, out of business and a lot of employment-related issues in Europe that are farming-related. Uh, please tell us how the lobby won't stop you. Well, we are actually an enabling technology. This is how we understand us. So we are collaborating with farmers. We are collaborating with the dairy industry and with the food industry. You can already see there is um, over uh, 30 LOIs that we have secured. We, have, uh, we are in the process of finalizing the first really big industrial uh, contracts with the food industry. And with this, we have built a circular system that also incorporates the farmers because we do need cells. We do need cells from animals. We just don't need the masses of animals that we are currently using in the food industry. So it's a fraction that can still provide the same output. Thank you, Svenja. Can you tell us what type of company you're building? Is it like a processing company? Are you a lab company? Are you ultimately moving to the consumer side? What is it going to be? So we are clearly focused on B2B because we can tailor the milk production, which is very interesting for the industry because that really helps them to uh, reduce the cost that they have and it's a kind of a direct replacement. <laughs> so what we do is we, uh, we have built a pilot production facility that is opening in January 2025, where we have the first really big scale pre-industrial uh, bioreactor. And um, with this, we're going to provide the first samples to the industry. But actually, the aim is to collaborate with industrial partners to also be a technology provider to those industries. So for every kind of product that we develop, you can imagine for um, a chocolate, you need a different type of milk than for a cheese. And all of these options, that is something that are specific to the companies. So we can provide the bioreactors, the processing lines, uh, and of course also the IP, access to the IP, so licensing. This, this is building a lot uh, immediately. Having built stuff and continuous processes can have a lot of snagging and so forth. So, so how are you going to get through that snagging of getting your continuous process to working? Do you need stable inputs? Like, there's been a lot of bio stuff that has struggled with these types of issues. So how are you going to get through them? Absolutely, really, yeah, a very valid question. We have decided on really being uh, focused on B2B because we want to mitigate some of these obstacles already. So we don't want to build our own supply chains, our own, well, our supply chains obviously for the inputs we need, but not the distributing, uh, distribution, supermarket placements, which are a main thing that uh, alternatives are also struggling with. But just about generating the milk, if you're doing it yourself and buying Bioreactors. Yes. How much have you done? Like, have you done a liter today? Have you done 10? Have you done 300? Like, where are you? And, yes. and, and that's been one of the main obstacles for like scaling like eggs without hens or something else. So, so just talk us through how you're going to work through those challenges. We started in 2022 with the first kind of microliters, really proof of concept. Um, so far, as far as I know, we're the only company that has actually managed to scale this technology into something tangible. So we're producing the first liters, but with a system that's this big. Uh, we have bigger scale systems, but the one we're building at the moment is a really large scale system. So with that, we can really increase the output. And of course, you need um, nutrients for the cells. So we have um, made uh, large scale contracts with industrial providers of um, culture medium, so kind of the vitamin soup that the cells need for the nutrients. So we are well prepared to upscale the production. That is all in line. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Svenja, for the great pitch. Thanks Thank for you. the questions. Let's All give right. a big round. Thank you.